Good morning. All right. Great. Welcome all, one and all, to the January 2024 meeting of the Hadley Committee for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Sorry, I can't talk when I'm masked. Keep working on that. There you go. <laughs> All I have to do is fill up and run the meeting, and I can't even. Now you're doing um, win time. Technical support, we've taken care of that. Opening reflections. Does anyone have anything they would like to share? Um, I invite uh, positive thoughts, but we can end with positive if there's something weighing on anyone's mind. I think it's good to have these reflections at the end rather than the beginning okay. of the meeting. If we, could, we can do that. It's for we will do that. And <clears throat> with that, um, we jump into the clerk's report, or should we welcome our in-person? Yes, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Ruth Ann Fitzgibbons, I'm a Spanish teacher and uh, I also am a coordinator of experiential service learning over at Hopkins Academy. Welcome. Thank you. I'm Kelly Lamberto, um, and I teach French at Hopkins Academy. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Merci. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Megan Rowland. I, um, my son Eli goes to Hopkins, so you might Hi. know him. Uh, I have been part of the DEI group um, but was out in the fall. I uh, teach one class at UMass and have Thursday evening class. But now I am bright and early Tuesday, Thursday morning. So I can be here. I'm glad to be back. Yay, great. Also a clinical social worker with the practice in Amherst. So welcome. So happy to have I, you both here. Thank I didn't you. Even Thank recognize you. It. See, dementia is good. Yeah. I, didn't even, I don't know if your hair is longer, the, yeah, the, the mask. The hair is different. I'm going to go I'm going to go with that. Incognito. I'm, so I'm like, is that woman? <laughs> I mean, it has been, what, four I months since yeah. we've yeah. seen that? Yeah, it's been a little while. It's fine. You have a pass. Short term, long term. <laughs> All right. As an 85 year old, I'll tell you it happened. Yeah. <laughs> At 62, I don't know. It, it already it's, happened. It's, yeah. yeah. Um, so, Pat, we should introduce our sure. Oh, yeah, we can introduce. So, I'm Pat Rismer, and I was lucky to connect with you both, and very grateful that you're here. And as I explained, we um, had worked with Jason Burns on a program on Indigenous people several years ago, and really enjoyed it. And one of our goals this year was to connect with the different um, departments and groups and organizations in town, and Hopkins was on our list. So, Great. so happy that you accepted yeah. our invitation to be here yeah. and, and our help with the program that you're planning. It sounds excellent yeah. in the spring. Yeah. And Sarah Strong. I mean, is she she needs, needs no introduction. <laughs> we were just kind of oh, introduced her. Sorry, I was flipping back and forth and writing things down. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Sarah Strong. I've lived in Hadley since 1986, but I'm finally now getting to know people kind of through this committee and stuff because my child did not go to Hadley Public School. So I got to know those folks. Great. I'm Joanne Godding and I, I'm very interested in this topic. And uh, my daughter did go to Copson. She took class with you. Yes. Um, that's it. And I am Mark Dunn. I've been in town since 97, a little foray out and then came back. Um, and, uh, I was one, I think all, I think this side were all part of the founding, uh, members yeah. with Christian Stanley and his mm -hmm. wife. Yeah. Um, when we started this committee four, five years ago, I'm not sure. Okay. He was still on the, it was may, maybe the end, end of his tenure. Um, and, uh, I, uh, was passed the torch by this gentleman to be the uh, chair. Mm -hmm. uh, I hadn't, you know, I don't think I've earned it, but I here I sit. So mm -hmm. I'm Wayne Abercrombie. Uh, I'm retired from Mass and lived in Hadley since the mid nineties, mm -hmm. and uh, happy to be on the committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no. Yeah. 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 So I'm just going to run through the quick business and get right to you. Uh, so we review the minutes, or do you want to put that till after we? I think we could do it, and 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 you could tell us a little bit about your program. Would that be okay, Mark? Sure. If we yeah. learned as a group more sure. about the program and um, what you've been thinking. I think you have a date for at least one part of the program. Anything you want sure. to share about the program? I think we, we have. It, it's kind of a two part. Um, Kelly and I, among uh, with others of our others of our colleagues, are we're on a um, collaboration committee, and our collaboration. Our, our plan was to, to to celebrate the cultures of our community um, within Hopkins and Hadley. So mm -hmm. we're only just beginning that. Um, we kind of imagined a, a meal towards the end of the um, school year uh, shared with community members and um, our school. Um, we're just beginning that. But in the meantime, I'll let Kelly elaborate more. She um, worked with a group in her last school and we are bringing them on, on campus thanks to the Board of Trustees. So Kelly will share, share more about that. Yeah, so um, the group is a Boston-based Haitian folkloric dance company. Mm -hmm. um, and they do programming throughout Massachusetts in Boston area schools. And they do a lot of fundraising so they can bring dance education to Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Um, and they've been doing this for a number of years. And um, so a few years back, looking to do some more project-based learning with students, um, we invited them to our school. And it happened to be the pandemic year, so we never got to do those workshops. But then down the road, it happened last year and yeah thanks to the trustees grant we're going to be bringing them on may 3rd to hopkins academy um for a day of folkloric workshop haitian folkloric workshops um it will be school-wide serving grades 7 through 12. um and within those workshops so actually leading up to it is the project piece that the students um will you know, at least our language students will participate in. Um, the idea is to have them develop something around themes of, well, particularly music and movement, um, while, you know, focusing on the target languages in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. Spanish in the Dominican Republic, and then French and Creole in Haiti. Mm -hmm. um, and then they'll have an opportunity to share those projects with Jean and the group and then participate in those workshops, which is gonna be really wonderful um, and have some really rich conversations. Mm -hmm. We're gonna um, also have the company do a professional, like a, extracts of their company pieces. Uh, the one that they'll perform is called Traka, T-R-A-K-A. -A. It's a Creole word meaning trauma mm -hmm. and themes that come from their performance really center around global migration, um, healing through community, through movement and cultural expression. Um, and then we lead a pretty dynamic, we facilitate a conversation within the school and the participants um, after the performance. So we're really looking forward to that and having students actually do that facilitation. Um, and then I'll say another piece, I think I wanted to say, yeah, so um, what else I was gonna add? Oh, we're gonna do also with the um, cafeteria staff, we're gonna have a themed lunch. Uh, right now, the International Club is working on um, figuring, you know, what kind of food we might serve that day. Mm -hmm. um, it may be a home recipe as well. So we're looking to make that meaningful connection mm -hmm. at that part. Um, and the students will rotate through these workshops and we'll fit as many people as we can into the auditorium for the performance. Uh, it should be pretty, it should be pretty wonderful. So it'll be an unique performance. It'll be actually during the school day. Um, so it'll be. We're thinking it might be toward the morning. Um, we're thinking we might try to bring over some of the sixth grade students as well to be part of it. Um, those plans are still in the making right now. We're still kind of working through the details for the logistics, but, or we'll conclude the day. We just want to have enough time to have that facilitation of the discussion. Um, and yeah, it, it should be great. It's just, it's a wonderful, they'll have, um, you know, their whole company with us get to talk about music some of the piece um there's some poetry in the piece oh there's a oh this is the other piece there's a documentary of the making of traka um 
They had developed it during the pandemic at Jacob's Pillow, mm -hmm. and they interview the artists, the dancers, the performers throughout their experience, what they brought and the kind of work that they did in approaching these themes, um, really with the goal of empowering communities. So really excited to bring that into Hopkins. And if we can expand it, we're, we had talked a little bit about a potential of having some other workshops throughout the day, but we're kind of like still figuring, we have to check in on Monday actually. But okay. So we'll see. Okay. Wow. But yeah, but that's uh, that's what May 3rd is gonna awesome. entail a bit. Yeah. And there, am I correct in thinking there are 10 or more Haitian students in the yes. school system right now? Yep, um, and those uh, students are primarily at the elementary school. Okay. So this is our um, intention as well, is to include those our community and those students um, to connect them to our workshops and participate. Yeah. Um, and that will be kind of in this work pre, you know, into the, you know, pre-performance. And mm -hmm. hopeful students, either an international club or a language program can build some, you know, a bridges to, to bring them to bring them to our school. Oh, that's, that's real My brother-in-law works in Haiti. He's been there for 20 years <clears throat> working with a, an organization that um, started by giving loans to women uh, to start a business or whatever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he's now in the branch of it that is identifying the, the poorest of the poor giving them education and training for 16 months, uh, 16, yeah, 16 months, and then funding them with a cow or a business or starting a business. And he's now in that. Mm -hmm. And he'll be visiting in February and also at the end of April. If oh, you should want to contact okay. with, yeah. um, with him. That would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd be yeah. wonderful. Yeah. He'd be happy to talk with you about uh -huh. what he sees from his vantage point. That'd be wonderful because part of the whole project-based learning experience for students is to reach out to um, experts in the field of study. So, um, you know, that would be a wonderful contact, that experience and perspective of being in Haiti and, um, you know, just gaining those perspectives among Others within, you know, the dance community, the music community as well, would is would be wonderful. That I'm sure yeah, be happy sure. to talk with you Thank if you, you wanted to make yeah. contact. Thank you. Thank you. Could you share the name of the group that you're working with? Yeah, um, Jean. So J E A N Apollon A P P O L O N Expressions. Mm -hmm. So Jean started the company, at, I would say about 10 years or so ago. They do a lot of folkloric dance in Boston. Mm -hmm. And this particular mm -hmm. student programming, though, is truly to um, really build empowerment in, through movement and connection. Mm -hmm. um, so they do some really great great work. So it's really exciting yeah. to have the kids participate. Because you've already seen them. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's quite a Haitian community in Boston. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Quite a strong yeah. you know, community there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fun to see their faces light up when someone we're interacting with someone and my wife will say something to them in Creole mm -hmm. and their whole face mm -hmm. lights up oh. and smile and, and respond. Mm -hmm. It's it's really something to see. Mm -hmm. and quite a community there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think this year we're going to see, we're, we're still kind of working it out with the company. Um, the idea is to bring in a little bit more of the, um, performance, like clothing and costume that they're going to be using and the meanings behind those as well. And, um, I think what's interesting is the dance is kind of a great way to talk about the historic, you know, reasons mm -hmm. behind it. Um, some students that I had in the past who did this project, you know, linked it to harvest. Right, dances around harvest at different times of the year, and they made a recipe for their project that was what was harvested. So there are all these wonderful connections that mm -hmm. kind of um, brought in, you know, great perspective. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I think we should add the local. Remember, we were saying our theme. Oh yes, yes, right. Yeah. yeah, we were talking generally for our community event being um, local, personal, local, and global. So this would be the global component, but the you know culture. Through the lens of a local perspective, 
um, per, well, personal first, right? With our personal culture, with our personal expression, culture, and heritage, and then our local communities, and then global, and kind of seeing the interconnectedness between all of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, wow. that's what we're working on. <laughs> and that's sort of, well, I'm, I'm sorry if I missed it. Is this sort of first of this type of event? And, um, Hopkins or has this? We've done diverse uh, diverse events before, but I think this is that we're taking it to a new level. I would uh, say, yeah. yes, I we would say. we have done we have done little bits. I would say, but yeah, this this is and it was um at when Kelly approached um our principal because she was the one who sends the requests to the trustees. Kelly said, "There's three different levels we can do," and the board of trustees approved us at the highest level. Mm-hmm. So we're getting really everything that we. Mm-hmm. would yep. dream of really yeah right that includes um we have a live musician so we'll have live drumming during yeah. the workshops oh, and through the show that will be phenomenal um, oh yeah their piece is you know it's designed with a lot of um sounds uh rooted in voodoo culture and religion and it's just going to be phenomenal i think mm-hmm. the, the drumming yes. <laughs> yeah. and engaging for our kids so oh, yeah mm-hmm. it'll be That's great wonderful. I don't know if it's, there's anything we can do to support that, but mm-hmm. you know, it, if, okay. if, if, if we can, I mean, it sounds like you're really doing a great job. I don't know if there's anything. If you see a way we can cooperate with you and mm-hmm. help you in some way, let us know. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We meet once a month. So. For sure. Yeah. We, mm-hmm. it would, it's nice to collaborate and yeah. like. It, yeah. Our first idea, like I said before, this this um event was to create to to embrace the cultures in our Hadley community. So um this would be a great group to to even take it that next step, which would is is outside of the performances, but more um and I we still haven't figured that piece of it out, but um to to have to bring me have actually have a meal together is what we're right. envisioning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let us know how we can help. Okay, thank you. My family and I previously lived in Deerfield, and I was part of a community organization there. And we put on, helped to organize an event at the elementary school in Deerfield. It was kind of this idea of families being invited. There was live music, and people could bring foods from their culture. Um, I don't know if we followed guidelines in terms of like cooking safety and all that but (laughs) people brought you know food from their culture and you know put out some information and we had like a reading corner and Mm -hmm. um educational materials and the dance party the music teacher DJed it was so fun um and it was a really celebratory way Mm -hmm. for kids you know that's obviously younger than Hopkins but to just learn about, okay, you know, the families in our community, where are people from, right. what is their heritage? Yeah. Really Anybody great. Anybody wants to mention food as an organizing principle. Absolutely. Sort of <laughs> through all the yeah. other yeah, yeah. questionable mm-hmm. things that you might want to do and awkwardness. Mm-hmm. There's always food. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. So last year, we, we supported, I think even co-sponsored the Around the World um, Potluck oh. with Hadley Learns. Right. Oh, okay. And, okay. And that so I think true. was a at least two year tradition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Sarah, I think you were involved from the beginning, weren't you? I'm trying to remember it's been twice or three times. I think it might be three times. Because I think we had the first one in this building and the second one at the library and the third one back here. <laughs> Yeah. And how did you, I guess what we are wondering is how we're going to really spread the word. How, how was, how did that end up? Um, how were you able to, to get a good, good amount of people? Well, Hadley Learns has a pretty big email list. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm on it actually. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 So that would be mm-hmm. one way to just share it on the Hadley Learns email list. Okay. Also generating articles about the events that mm. the Gazette could publish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. But and yeah. if you can get through one of those articles, if you can get them interested in sending a reporter to ask yeah. you oh, yeah. and yeah. put together something. Yeah. I think the first initial ones would be things that you put out, talking the way you just did to us to explain what's going to happen. Okay. And mm-hmm. alert them to the fact that this is going to be a, 
community event that that we'd like to let a lot of people know about. Yeah. And if you generate those first ones, then I think they would come to you and be an interesting thing for the paper to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was going to say we could, um, you know, we could hand out a little handout or flyer mm -hmm. at town meeting, but hasn't that moved to May now? Maybe the elections or April, <laughs> but I, I think that was how that worked. But the town I meeting, I don't know if we know the date for town meeting. It used to be town meeting was right around um, elections, which I think are, are it would be easy to find April. April. But yeah, we, oh, yeah, if one of those is in April, April would be a good time to yeah. <clears throat> have things out. So it doesn't, it's not too far ahead and doesn't fall off people's, mm -hmm. you know, at least you would. You would Get the voters. <laughs> I want to actually. Bravo for doing this. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to say I really appreciate you doing something that's open to the community. And I imagine that many things at Hopkins are, but since I don't have a student in the school, I have no idea. Right. So this is good that we know, but there could be other things that happening that you might love some community support mm -hmm. yeah i was just thinking of the diversity club i can't remember but they just did they did they reach out to you ever we they, they, with Amy Lanham, yeah. yes yes okay yeah because she's she's very active and she does a uh, she does a lot so yeah she yeah, used to have, attend our meetings she with, did uh, we had a student rep too yeah her student uh, and they think she's, she's graduated. graduated she's graduated yeah oh, okay i think that was our first year or second year yeah yeah, yeah. but we haven't Connected with them since, so mm -hmm. that would be. Well, Amy had her baby, and then yes, she yeah. oh, well, has too. So she <laughs> tried to stick with us, but yes. I think mm -hmm. that was uh, stucking mm -hmm. up her bandwidth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. If you just put us on your list when you yeah. talk to other people, and just make sure our we're mentioned <laughs> yeah. there somewhere, we a way to contact her. us. Right. Yeah. I mean, I can show up to anything. Okay. You know? okay. <laughs> and we we'd love to get another student rep if that's something yes. you're interested yeah. in. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. How often do you meet? Once a month. Okay. Right. At this uh, oh oh yeah there we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually yeah. always the third Thursday. Oh okay. Uh, yeah. Except near holidays. Except like Christmas. Yeah, Christmas we'll yeah. bump it to the second yeah. and I think maybe did we skip August last yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's also no money, but I think it's we because we realized that so many people were traveling. Yeah. yeah. We'll see what it looks like this year. Yeah. 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 And we always have the sure Zoom option. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your support. Including us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, thank you for welcoming us. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank if you. there's anything that an idea that you have and you want to come back or you want to just share it with us, we'd be happy to share it. I I don't know if the Hadley World Fair will happen again this year but it was a food centered you know cultural event and i don't know if that would be something you would like to co-sponsor that with the hadley learns group that that's, that's a right. great that's good idea, idea. Yeah. yeah and my notes say that it was hadley learns the council on aging okay um, the public library oh, great. and us so mm. you know i think that we mm. you know and I'm, I'm not the organizer of it but mm. i could see it could be bigger Oh yes, and yeah. our partners and mm -hmm. even in multiple buildings, we we had it here. Yeah, yeah. And, and twice in the library once. once. So yeah. you know, I think there's room for that to grow. Okay. Um, and it looks like in 2022 it was on September 23rd. Okay. So yeah, yeah I right. think we're really interested in in building partnerships and yeah. coalitions mm -hmm. as a committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So are we. So yeah. Yeah. There you go. What is this the saying about many hands make light work or yeah. something like that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Great. And thank you for coming out at night. Oh, since yeah. We know yes. you yeah. are here. You know, there yeah. at like seven in the morning. So <laughs> it's for that. Kelly, I live up the road, but Kelly traveled from East Hampton. So oh, thank yeah. you. Really. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question on the um the World's Fair actually. Yeah. What was the way that um what was the outreach to the community? What did that look like? Was there to invite folks to bring food? Yeah. I'm curious what I that remember how that worked. Uh I remember it coming through the to me coming through the Hadley Learns uh, email. Oh, through is, the email. Okay. And with a sign up form. And, yeah, and, and I don't know how much more outreach was done outside of that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's nice to think about ways to reach out to people who aren't on different lists. Like I don't do Facebook, so I never get any. It, yeah, you know, there's right. I, I'm the read the Daily Hampshire Gazette every day gal. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, and that's where I get my. But everybody's different, right. so yeah. mm -hmm. you know, flyers and places. I I look for flyers in the in the library. You know, for things going on. I'm not kind of kind of old school person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of something we've already touched on is how to get, you know, there's no one place to get information out. Like, mm -hmm. you know, for example, we talked about when there's, um, when the town meeting is, you know, it, it, it often isn't posted until two weeks before. And, and sometimes people have plans made, but by then, and we were like, there's got to be someone in town who knows it's what it's going to be before that two hour, you know, the yeah. two week. Um, post, you know, so, yeah, so however we can communicate better. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> Last year it was actually in June. The Amazing. meal 2022 okay. was in, in September, but in, in 2023 it was June. Oh, was that around June 10th? It was right. Thursday, was June fifteenth. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So around June June tenth. Yeah. And here's the calendar. And it was at the Hadley Senior Center. Mm -hmm. And yep. I think right. everybody was invited. It started from Hadley Learns, and then people mm -hmm. were invited to respond with what dish they were going to bring. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and it was terrific. Oh. And one of our members is not here tonight. Um, or Crystal, Crystal Jackson, she actually is a cook, and she prepared some food for it mm. in the around the yeah. Juneteenth theme. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see. This is not the way to look up town meeting. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. You, yeah. you need this. Stay the okay, but, oh, thank but you. you're welcome to. Yeah. Thank you for welcoming yeah. us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. it will be nice to collaborate. And it will be, yeah, like you sure. said, it takes a village. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. I'll tell you, I got to meet too. Yeah, <laughs> like to Jen, say hi to Jenny too. I will. We run by your house every. I know, I know. I'm, 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 I just, I'm not running by. I'm waving. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Good to see you. Folks. Great to see yeah. you too. Thanks yeah. so much. Yeah. You're welcome. I knew a. I think, it was Joe I think yeah the, um we have an s at the end of our name oh, okay yeah um my husband i grew up in holyoke my okay. um and my husband did too and mm -hmm. um his father was a south hadley legend at the high school but oh, now too. we're hadley is i came to hadley for the sake of my children so oh, yeah. they loved loved hopkins <laughs> nice. right? great. thank you so much and thank you very much have a good night you too mm -hmm. That was delightful. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Um, so we're under old business. That was for A. For B, it's like I am to report on meeting with the Hadley HR director. Um, I did not get that next e email out. I'm just too mm -hmm. busy, but he's at a conference. I right. will try and send it out tomorrow and try and confirm him for our February. Mm -hmm. uh, if you recall, we invited him to mm -hmm. this one, but he was traveling today for a conference tomorrow mm -hmm. and Saturday, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, so we will try to uh, engage him. And um, I think we shared, he sent a bunch of uh, helpful resources. Yeah, so that was very encouraging that he's, oh, yeah. you know, he's not just checking the boxes he's actually researching a lot of this stuff and, and being educated yeah yeah so, that was that was encouraging thank you pat yeah minutes are going to end up you're welcome oh we can prepare you have one of them yeah don't have this Um, there was nothing else to report on the on Sorry, Bryn, I would move to 4C, which is movie matinee with Hadley Senior Center, 
and maybe Pat wants to speak on that while I'm going to move. And it's nothing personal. I just thought I'd spread out. Sure. That's okay. Short. Yep. Six feet, right? Yeah. There, there I gotcha. Go. Well, I feel like I'm, you know, a teacher and I passed the yeah. hand up. I, I went a little crazy. I, I like just, it. I printed a lot of things. Thank you, Pat. And I, I know like we it. have talked about the um, annual report many times. I don't think I actually ever printed it. It is available online, but I I printed it today because it features the Juneteenth program okay. from 2022. Right. And this is what we had talked about doing again this year, but instead of at the library, doing it at the senior center, um, showing the same film, right. High on the Hog, Episode four, which we we did it with the library, but we didn't do it with the senior center. Oh, okay. So it was a different population. I, right. I don't think there were many seniors at the library, and I think that the seniors would enjoy this film, and it would yeah. be related to Juneteenth. And when I talked to Violet about it, she said, "And will there be food?" Mm -hmm. I said, "Yes, there will be food. We'll bring some food, you know, consistent with the theme. So if if this is what we want to do." Oh, good. It's available. We can. She can get it. She looked it up. Oh, sure. Is yeah. it the same program, different episode, or it's the same episode because same that episode focuses on Juneteenth specifically. So like seniors, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's okay. an excellent idea. Great. And then maybe we can make um, red velvet cupcakes or something because that is part of the film and oh. uh, one of the mm -hmm. foods that is common, commonly eaten. So anyway. If that if that was sounded good to Violet. Yeah, yeah. And that is June fourteenth. That's right, June the fourteenth. I don't know how. Put that on, on your calendars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's nothing else on that. We can move on to 4D, Confirmation of Senior Center, Classroom for CDN meetings. It's already been done, right? Yeah, yeah. I just confirmed that they were done, and, and by the way, yes, we'll reserve all through June okay. for that. Okay. And review of clerk responsibilities, like February and March. I have another handout somewhere here. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone for agreeing to, especially Joanne, who offered to um, take some of the responses. Sarah's offered to take the minutes, and Sarah has done that herself, and she keeps her own set of minutes. And also, I just want to recognize Sarah for then posting the minutes on the website. If you pull up the website, you will see Sarah's work. It's excellent. Ah. And what she inherited was was sparsely populated with minutes and yeah, time to go through, through and really and um, find them. And, and so after we approve the minutes, Sarah takes them and she posts them. And yeah. so our website looks really good because of Sarah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and because of writing every single step down as Jennifer taught. <laughs> That's right. Every yeah. single step. Yeah. Well, and um, and Pat I, doing the actual minutes so that I can just upload them. Yeah, I don't know if I made enough of these, but Joanne had asked if I could do a oh, template. So Did you bring it. Yes, it's the I same thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, good. Yours are in color, but I, it's okay, right? So everything special. You. It's um, there's just a number of steps to get the meeting on the calendar. And so this is, I appreciate Joanne asking for it because yeah. now it's in writing Good. <laughs> and it isn't intuitive. Not at least my intuition. Because yeah. you, you need to you need to contact different people to get things done. To get something and then get that to the other. They do, you do. But if you just look at the top section and this might be all that you're interested in looking at, that the goal is you have to get the meeting posted 48 hours business hours in advance of the meeting and it needs to be scheduled and posted on the town website. If it's not met, you can't have the meeting. And Monday holidays can throw you off. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that can throw you off or somebody 
um, isn't available. So you do have to leave a fair amount of time, even though I admit I, I sometimes skirt by in the end and <laughs> get it done. Mm -hmm. um, but so the chair has to, you know, approve the agenda. The agenda has to have a Zoom link provided by Jennifer Sanders James. The agenda has to be reviewed, approved, and posted on Hadley, Hadley website by Jessica Bank Noble. And then it has to be, doesn't have to be, but it's good to distribute it by email and beyond. That's not a must. The other three are must. They must, that must be done to have the meeting. And then I just wrote the very specifics on, on how you can do mm -hmm. that, how Joanne can do it, because she mm -hmm. asked for it. And so those are the details. And then I put phone numbers in the bottom. And then I also attached some examples of yeah, emails that I sent. And then this month, I will do it. Joanne, I will do it for next month. So I'll get a minute, and then I'll, um, I'll also secure the link for the February meeting, and I'll copy you on what I write. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So then you'll have it, and then, you, so I'll do it for February, and you do it for March and April. How's that? Oh, okay. So it's March and April. Yeah, I had down February and March, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking at that. I'm going to be in Nebraska around the zone. But this is, I'm going to have to do it earlier. Yeah, that's fine. And I yeah. talked to Jennifer, and Jennifer said she would give the Zoom link as early as you wanted. Yeah, because that could, that could work. Yeah, like I, I, I got it. it this time early. I, yeah. I t explained to her that you were going to do it, and she said you could do it right after the next day, and she would give you the Zoom link for the next okay. day. Right. Okay. Okay. Yep. So one of my questions is develop agenda. So this says clerk does that, but Mark has to, how, how does that work? Pat usually sends it to me in an email and says, what do you think of this? And, you know, obviously old business carries over mm -hmm. based on the minutes and New business might be things that we suggested, at, you know, so it may the agenda may be largely generated by the previous yeah. minutes, um, and then sometimes Pat and I will bounce ideas mm -hmm. off each other. Do you want to add this in there? Or add that in there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. so that could take some time because what I what I was trying to do is mm -hmm. go. Okay, this is the meeting. Here's what I, you know, I got back myself, it up. I got to back it up, mm -hmm. and I don't know how long developing the agenda takes. Mark is very responsive, so. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes if I check my email, yeah. <laughs> Here's his phone number. And you've yeah. got the structure already, right? Yeah. Is, and this is done in yeah. Word, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, I I, yeah. I do the same thing for another group I'm in, right. so it's, yeah. that's why I said I take a template, and change the dates, and I right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you know that's not that's not yeah. yeah. So usually the most recent agenda can you can start with that yeah. and then delete yeah. the items that were yeah were handled and add anything else, and mm -hmm. then I would send it to Mark as a draft, and he may tweak it a little, and then then usually I just say. That's wonderful. Thanks for doing it. I figured that could be the case, yeah. but you might have something to add. Right. Maybe you always add value to it. Because so. my thinking was, like I was looking at March, I was going, okay, so if I did that over the weekend of the night and the 10th, and Mark got back yeah. to me, yeah. then I get a Zoom link, then I get approved, and then I distribute the, you know, I would be like golden. <laughs> you know. Don't keep it taking that on. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, April, like I said. Uh, yeah. The meeting is right after I get back. I, I'll, 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 I can do that. I'm just seeing that I have to do it earlier. But this isn't outside of the realm of my skill set at all. No, I'm, I'm well that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, that's the end of old. Business? So did we have to do the minutes, Mark? Sorry. Oh yes, we should go back. Oh yeah, we should do the minutes. I don't know if everyone has that on the back of mm -hmm. their.
I mean, it might be written. Can I second that? Yeah. Oh, in favor? Aye. Right. Aye. It is unanimous. With thanks to the secretary. Yes. Kudos to the clerk. Of course, I will not be here. Um, so that wraps, again, brings us to new business. Uh, proposed additional meeting dates. Um, Ann caught the error. These yeah. are not the right dates. So she planted that and she caught it. So. <laughs> it's okay. We just subtract a day and you've got it right. <laughs> 6 20, 7 18, yeah. 8 15, 9 19, 10 17, 11 14, and 12 12. Great. Thank you. And I like all those dates. But I agree with you. We want to take a look at summer and see right. what people are doing in August. <clears throat> um, moving on to uh, 5B, we have the Haitian students enrolled in Hadley schools and need for family support. So I um reached out to um the town administrator uh carolyn brennan and mm -hmm. she said really the person who knows more than i do is superintendent of schools dr mm -hmm. annie mckenzie mm -hmm. so i sent her an email and the next morning she called me mm -hmm. um and then followed up with an email, which was great. That was yesterday. She's amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. she really is. She's on it. And she was, you know, apologizing for not being able to come tonight. I said I, I asked you a day before. I, I would not. <laughs> I just asked if if you had a pre, you know, yeah. already set up status report that you could share with us. And so she did toss that into. A, she had one from I think it was November. Um. Can you copy that to us? Yes, I would. I can. Yes, I I will send this out. She said, um, "I'll try to read through it quickly." Take your time. Yeah, she said, "Thank you for your interest in supporting our newcomer families. I appreciate your group. I am sorry I will not be able to send you." Here's a brief update. This information is from November first, but I have not been made aware of any changes to the census. So she said, the update from the Executive Office of Health and Human Services and Kevin Connor, press the secretary, the Executive Officer of Housing and Livable Communities, um, that there are 12 rooms booked at the Knights Inn. Uh, one room is used as a space for the National Guard and other storage and health assessments. Um, Knights Inn, is that the one? Uh -huh. That's behind you? Behind me. I think so. Yeah. Remember yeah, the one where we got the lights fixed. Um, yeah, and then uh, they have eleven families, which is uh, which is composes thirty two individuals. Uh, Sixteen people are under twenty one. Sixteen are adults. Uh, the majority arrived between October sixteenth and seventeenth. But some arrived on October 28th. Wow. Um, there's no anticipated end date. However, the goal is to find more stable housing. Families are expected to remain through June 30th, 2024. And that just sounds like the end of a fiscal year, if you ask me. Yeah. I, I didn't yeah. get into um, And that may be something to do with their status. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, <clears throat> legislative delegation, that's um, Congressman, State Congressman Kerry and Comerford, are working diligently to secure an on-site service coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, CHD, that's the Center for Human Development. Mm -hmm. uh, with, I looked them up online. They have something like maybe two dozen locations between Massachusetts and, and Connecticut. 
mostly here. I think maybe half a dozen in Connecticut. Say the name of that organization again. PhD Center for Human Development. And I think I read that they started in maybe the 90s, I can't remember, by uh, three individuals that felt like more should be done to help um, new immigrants. It's a private organization. Yes, I believe it's a nonprofit. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, she said, CHD is interested in entering into a contract with the state. The state just hasn't gotten its ducks in a row to do that. Um, she says, uh, thank you to our town administrator for her fast and coordinated response to supporting newly arriving families. Members of our task force, police and fire chiefs, director of board of health, building inspector, assessor, special thanks to Chief Spanknavel, who was boots on the ground immediately to mm -hmm. welcome families. Mm -hmm. uh, schools held an orientation for new families. Mm -hmm. Students are integrating into the school community seamlessly, thanks to the skill, love, and tireless efforts of our faculty and staff, and the welcoming attitude of our students in mm -hmm. the community at large. Uh, the district will receive additional funding from the state to address educational needs of new students. For example, hiring a part-time ESL teacher right. to meet uh, recommending English language instruction for newcomers. Uh, next point, she says, not disruptive. This year, schools and Enroll 36 new school choice students. Thank you, families, for choosing Hadley. Hadley schools? Yep. Enroll 36 new students. And 17 new Hadley resident students. So uh, that's. How many? 17? 17. You know, moved to town and 36 opted uh, for uh -huh. school choice. So that's 53 new students. Well, so 53 new students. 53 new students. What's that? 53 yeah, new students, 53 new students in, in this system in the habit this system. year into mm -hmm. this yeah, yeah right. uh, as of November 1st 18 of whom started school after the first day of the school year wow we are accustomed to welcoming students and families throughout the year so she said mm -hmm. that was not mm -hmm. rocking their boat that's a lot uh, that's the National nice. Guard point person is Staff Sergeant Mitchell has requested the following items if people are making the donations. And she lists uh, six items, shampoo, conditioner, uh, diapers of all sizes. Hold on, slowly. Well, I'll send this out to you. Yeah, but we want to hear it slow enough because Rose has to like to write. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I had shampoo, I had conditioner, I had diapers of all sizes, uh, feminine hygiene pads, mm -hmm. Bar soaps. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And the last on the list, but not least, was baby wipes. Oh, uh, yeah. Basic. We're talking basic stuff. Yeah. 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 So the National Guard is on site at Night's Inn between 12 and 6. Uh, it doesn't say if that's daily, seven days or five days. I, I don't 12 know. midnight and 6 a.m.? I think it's noon to 6, I think. Probably. It just says 12 to 6, so I'm going to guess yeah, they're there. Uh, if your group decides they would like to donate items, let me know, and I will either put you in direct contact with Staff Sergeant Mitchell or coordinate the drop-off with him. Thank you, and let me know if you need any other information. So mm -hmm. that's she had all of that. <laughs> wow. Wonderful. Yeah, um, she great. did say that um, you can't just drop things out. Like when people drop things at the school, they've ended up having to, you know, they either have to get them, they have no room to yeah, take process. on supplies, I guess, at the night's end. So mm -hmm. um, the National Guard, I think she said, having, you know, they say, they take thing, take items to the Worcester something drop. 
which isn't so practical for people in Hadley. So sometimes they've just taken them and given them to other charities because mm -hmm. they just can't. You know, huh. They're not in a position to well, right. store. I'm, I'm told, all this is needed, but there's no place to give it to. We just have to get in touch with the National Guard and say, uh -huh. We're you know, like so. We might collect them and have to hold on to them until they can take them. Uh -huh. It's not like we we can just drop it. There's not a, a yeah. collection mm -hmm. center. How do we contact the person? Who needs she to just said to contact her, and she may oh, put right. us. She may put us. You know, so okay. if we okay. if we want to create a point person to handle that, that might be. Um, I was telling her that it 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 reminded me of when I got involved with the Catholic Charities a couple of years ago with the Afghan families come in mm -hmm. and we formed what they call a circle of care. Mm -hmm. So if we found um, amongst us and other, you know, maybe how they learned or wherever, we found a team that was interested in helping support them. One role might be the point of contact with the uh, National Guard, mm -hmm. you know, I see. Mm -hmm. which would at first go through Dr. McKenzie mm -hmm. until she put the, us or that person in touch with them. And these are Haitian immigrants? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked about language. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, Haiti, is it French? And she said, well, mm -hmm. she said, um, with, uh, you know, as, as I understand, the gangs have really been ruling Haiti for a while. She said she's not sure how much education they were getting before they left Haiti. Yeah. And they have been, most of them journeyed up through mm. Central America. So they have picked up a, a working knowledge of Spanish. It's also Haitian Creole from that yeah. their language. Right. Yeah. So, so. Uh, and she said some of them, so some of the kids do speak French, but they're, uh, that's mostly, there was a group that came to Canada. And, schools and they, schools in Haiti are in French. But the schools may not be out Even though they don't know French. Right, but if they're not going yeah. to school, right? Yeah. I right, school. if they weren't so, able to go to school. Creole okay. is the one. Thing. So I did look up, I went to Wikipedia and I looked up Haitian Creole, and you may correct me on this. But it says Haitian Creole um, is a French-based Creole language spoken by 10 to 12 million people worldwide and is one of the two official languages of Haiti, the other being French, um, where it is the native, la the native language of the vast majority of the population. Yes, the language emerged from contact between French settlers and enslaved Africans mm -hmm. during the Atlantic slave trade in the French colony of Saint Domingue, now Haiti, in the 17th and 18th centuries. There are several kinds of Creole yeah. in right. many different countries, right. and that right. means it's their version of the invaders' language. Right. It's, right. It's, right. Although its vocabulary largely derives from the 18th century French. Its grammar is that of a West African Volta Congo mm -hmm. language branch, particularly mm -hmm. the Fangbe and Igbo languages. It also has influences from Spanish, English, Portuguese, oh, wow. Tango, and other West African languages. It is not mutually intelligible with standard French and has its own distinctive grammar. And, you know, so it, gotcha. goes, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting. Um, gotcha. But uh, there was somewhere, I don't know if I saw it here. Um, I think it was here that I read it. That uh, the usage of an education in uh, Haitian Creole has been contentious since at least the 19th century. Some Haitians view French as a lo legacy of colonialism, while Creole has been maligned by Francophiles as a miseducated person's French. Yeah. <laughs> Until the late 20th century, Haitians, Haitian presidents spoke only standard French to their fellow citizens. And until the 21st century, all instruction at Haitian elementary schools was in modern standard French. 
a second language to most of their students. Everybody in Haiti hey, yeah. speaks Haitian Creole. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Some of them understand French. Yeah. Some of them have a working knowledge from their elementary school yeah. if they still are yeah. in school. But Creole is the language yeah. that they all understand. Yeah. There was something yeah. else that I saw. So, that... Could I interrupt to let you know Laura's waiting? Oh, okay, sure. I'll 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 just sum up that I I read somewhere that the um there was a certain I I think it said that there was Haiti's population was split between three different that there were natives there were French speaking colonists and there were uh, African slaves you know um, slaves and when the um, People with the money and control there changed the crops and found that sugarcane was more profitable. That's what they changed up to, but it took it, it, it required more hands. And so these yeah. sugarcane, yeah. whatever you want to call them, lords, yeah. Yeah. brought many more African slaves. And so that tilted the scale. So it's right. you know, it was just an interesting. If, well, interesting, if not sad, um, history. Not that we can say we're above that, but anyway. Um, okay. So these families are just part of the many, many migrant families that are coming to the state that were placed specifically in Hadley. Correct. Okay. Got yeah. it. Got okay. it. So All we right. need somebody technically to admit Laura. Oh, is she not actually in? Well, I don't think she is. But Alex, Alex, is he there? Uh, no, I think her just video and oh, see, she unmuted herself. She yeah, oh, there, you there you are. He's been paying attention. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> I heard a lot of talk about food. I was like, did these people have dinner? <laughs> I have not. I'm, not, I'm sorry. We, we told you 7:30, and and here it is 8 o'clock. So all the conversations seem to go to join us. I didn't even know. She, okay. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Today. I would have. <laughs> welcome. Hello, everyone. Yeah, welcome. Um, um, I was invited to just give uh, the group a quick update about the status of the Econo Lodge property. Um, we had a number of conversations about this as we were kind of preparing to go for our zoning permit. Folks in town know that the Zoning Board of Appeals rejected our comprehensive permit. Um, you likely know that we appealed that to a state agency called the Housing Appeals Committee. Um, which ordered the Hadley ZBA to issue the comp permit within 30 days. And if they didn't, basically the, the Housing Appeals Committee decision becomes our permit. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals did not um, issue a comp permit. No one appealed the Housing Appeals Committee decision. And so we are kind of official on record with the zoning permission that we need to um, implement the project that we had originally proposed. Um, these things... Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So yes. these things take time. And so in the interim, while we were kind of sorting all of this out, um, we entered into an interim lease with Craig Stores, which is a, a individual shelter provider um, based in Amherst. They had previous leased, previously leased the Econo Lodge. Um, they took occupancy in the middle of June. Um, and we expect them to remain in place until we are ready to renovate the building. Um, and we think that that will be in about 18 months time. Um, really, we need to finish plans and we need to raise money. Um, construction has become frighteningly mm. expensive. Um, mm. And so that will be our task, um, our ne next task that we'll move to. Um, I, I would say the occupancy by Craig Stores is really been beneficial for us to have people using the building, not to have a vacant hotel. Um, and I think it's been be beneficial for the Craig Stores program as well. Um, they're occupying the first floor of the building. Um, they will occupy the second floor partially just during the winter for some emergency overflow um, and COVID isolation rooms. Um, and then they'll kind of shrink back down to just the first floor of the building. Um, we're working closely with them to think about where they're going to go next um, once they need to exit this particular building. Um, people may recall the renovation plan that we have in mind is to create 50, 5-0 affordable apartments, a mix of studio apartments and one bedroom apartments. 
um, half of which will have a preference for folks who are unhoused and the other half will just have income restrictions. But we do anticipate getting people who work there kind of along the Route 9 corridor in Hadley. Um, I will just share with this group, uh, we are almost done leasing up um, a property in Amherst, just two miles up Route 9 called East Gables. In that uh, situation, we built 28 studio apartments. We had 10 of them with a homeless preference. Uh, when we actually leased up the building, 20 of the incoming tenants were unhoused. Um, and what was really kind of fascinating to me was they were at all different income tiers. So we had people who were working full time, um, some in Hadley, some in Amherst, um, and could not afford housing. And so people were living in cars or sleeping on couches, but they didn't have a permanent place of their own. So the kind of, um, as we think about who doesn't have housing, I mean, it's it ties in nicely with your conversation about the nights in, but, you know, it's coming to be a very broad swath of, of our population who can't afford housing, especially if they want to live in an area like the kind of five college area, which is expensive for Western Mass. Mm -hmm. um, and so anyway, that was just an interesting side note about the level of need um, that we're seeing that really kind of traverses a number of different um, income levels. It We have people of different ages, we have people of different disability levels, we have certainly men and women, um, you know, it's it's a broad it's a broad and diverse group, um, racially and otherwise. And I'm happy to answer questions if people have them. I believe Wayne had a question. Sure. Is the Akuma Lodge the one behind me? No, no the Akuma Lodge night. is on the other side of the. That's the night. The Akuma yeah. Lodge is it's like in front back for of Whole Foods. Whole Foods. And... High Whole Foods. Yep. Yes, yeah. the big yeah. place. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've seen a lot of cars there. We yep. had the overflow yep. of students a couple of years ago. Right, yeah. right. So up until let's see, it was last the semester ending actually in December, I believe was had student housing, um, mm -hmm. just prior right. to the purchase of the building in January. Yeah, I remember when you guys were talking to us before yeah. the ZBA thing that it was students yeah. were in there at that time. I see several cars parked there yeah. now. So people are Those working. Are, yeah. That's part of the Craig's, what's it called? Craig's, Craig's, Craig's stores. stores. So yeah. you're seeing cars both of staff that are working on site as well as those um, guests living there who would who have a car. It's a minority of people, but it's it's some people do have vehicles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Uh, and thank you for your hard work. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Um, feel free to reach out if you have questions. And, you know, again, things kind of nothing happens overnight in my world. So we'll try to keep you apprised um, as we move along. Absolutely amazed at your patience. Yeah. Um, and perseverance. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. It's, it's decades of cultivated uh, experience. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You have to be tenacious for mm -hmm. what now, you believe in. Yeah. The um the delay, you know, by the ZBA having rejected mm -hmm. it, did that negatively impact any of your state funding? Because you had state funding to help you buy it, right? Yep. We did. So we did receive ARPA funds, um, which is kind of a you know, it's kind of a unique thing that the ARPA funding was available. Um, we had hoped to get additional ARPA funds for the renovation work and that ship has sailed. So yeah, yes, right. it's not that we can't raise the money, it's that that particular kind of abundance of resources <laughs> is mm. done. Yeah. So yeah, it, we have to kind of get in line <laughs> with everybody else who's competing for uh, affordable yeah. housing dollars, including our own projects. So as we waited for the Econolodge to kind of resolve, we mm. were working other projects forward. So it's within our own pipeline, we need to kind of now slotted in um, as well as just competing with others in the state. So there's a cost. There'll be cost in terms of time and also money because every year that goes by construction becomes more expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you have your, your plate is full. Our plate is full, <laughs> yeah. but it's good. That's the work that we like to do and there's the demand is, the, the project I mentioned in Amherst that just leased up the 28 apartments, we had 501 applications 
Wow. Oh. 28 apartments. Wow. wow. And about the half need. of them from people who didn't have any housing. So the need is there. The yeah. need is there. Yes. And growing. Yeah. Appears well, to be growing, sadly. Yeah. Thank you so much. Do we have any Welcome. more questions? We've already kept her an extra half hour. It's okay. I always learn something. Okay. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Laura. You're thank welcome. You. You have a good night. You too. Hey, folks, I have to go. Okay. 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 Bye, Wayne. You were here. <laughs> and I, yeah. <laughs> I start teaching at UMass February 1st. Oh. oh. And I'm oh. still early. I agree to teach full load. Uh, oh, no, no. We to be in there. It was, it was <laughs> dumb. It was dumb, and I'm paying the price now. But I well, well, hope you don't have to divorce. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. glad you're up and able. Good luck. Well, I bet you're going to <laughs> Good you. night. Good, good, good to see you, Wayne. Wow. So that was a lot of interesting information. Yeah. A lot going on. Yeah. Um, mm. The last thing on the new business was the UMass DEI. Initiative. I did not print anything on that. There was a um, uh, there was an email that they sent out around uh, before you know at the beginning of the weekend of Martin Luther King, and there was an event that they had. But there's another one coming. I think it's something like January 30th or something. I will send that out. Um, it was not clear. It did not say. But I'm not positive that you know did didn't say it was restricted to the UMass community only. Um, it was a uh, virtual online, so I don't. I wouldn't think that it would be limited, but uh, it sounded very interesting. And I will send that out. I'm sorry, I don't remember the particulars, but uh, send that to everyone when I send out um, when I forward the information that I got from Annie McKenzie. Okay. Open agenda, um, other than praising the, the return of our prodigal. <laughs> Yay! I think it's so much. She had time. Thank you. Glad to be back. Yeah, we definitely missed you. Oh, definitely. Hey. Yeah. yeah. All right, Miss Crystal. I wonder where she. Crystal wasn't able to come. She had a last minute oh. conflict. Oh, okay. She, so and she wasn't set up for Zoom. She was oh, going to try to Zoom okay. in, but she she mm -hmm. she can't. Mm -hmm. She sends her regards. Oh, okay. I think we have another new member. Great, Crystal Jackson. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. I, I have a question. This is a good open agenda question because it has to do with agenda and what I'll, um, how, how do things get on the agenda when it's between meetings? If somebody, you know, has, wants to put something on the agenda, how is, how does that look? Like I see here, this all looks like it's follow up. Yeah. Oh, you know, so, and, and if I will have to make the agenda, I kind of need to know this. I think um, five um, five C we talked about at the last meeting. Five uh, B did we talk about that at the last yeah. meeting? Yeah, we brought that up. Yeah. And then five D was just an idea that I tossed out in an email back and forth. You know, I think when she sent me, yeah, that what, do you, what do you think of the agenda? And I said, oh, shall I add? Mm -hmm. uh, UMass, and she said, sure. Mm -hmm. And she did. Mm -hmm. and she did. Uh, yeah. I, I think I asked this in relation to also the the open meeting rules. Like, if one of us had an idea and emailed the whole group, we're not supposed to talk about it. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. But would I say, how do you all feel about putting this on the agenda? Or would I just mm -hmm. approach Pat and say, can you put this on the agenda? How many? It's not like how that works. How many members did we say? Or <laughs> we around six? Yeah. Six, six, seven. Seven. Or seven. Seven, with, yeah, seven back, now. With, yeah. With, like us to have. Bring it back. So, so if it's seven, even six, you know, you could have three people in a conversation. So, right. if you had mm -hmm. uh, an, an idea that you wanted to add to the agenda, you could send it to the clerk or the acting clerk. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and if you wanted to then have you bounce it off of me, yeah. um, that would make three people in series, um, but still would be under a uh, under a majority, so it would not be uh, in violation of open meeting. So you're saying that three people have to add something to the agenda? No, I'm oh, saying if you wanted to involve three, if oh oh, let's say Wayne had an idea after he gets home, he could send it to Pat, mm -hmm. and that's two uh -huh. people. Okay. And if she wants to bounce it off me, she can. That's three, mm -hmm. and that's still fine. Oh, I see. Yeah. And then let's say Megan has an idea, and she bounces it to the clerk, and the clerk may want to bounce it off me. That's three. We're still good. Mm -hmm. And then oh, okay. you could still decide to add it to the agenda and the entire group then discusses it. And it will be and then aired publicly. Right. right. So there's no right. behind the scenes discussion. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Can, I think it would be legal to add an item to the agenda and the meeting is then, you know, open mm -hmm. and the item is discussed openly. It's the discussion of it mm -hmm. privately. Yeah without it being right. open, that I think it'd be a good yeah. Yeah, But I, I think you're right. Uh, under open agenda, anybody could bring anything up right now. Oh, right. Exactly, right. there's that too. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. right. I, I asked the question because I sometimes get ideas and I think this could be good, but if people wanted to learn more about it ahead of time, go to this website and read about it and then we could come and talk about it. Like, yeah. would we need to look at the website together? <laughs> but I could, if I decide to put that on the agenda, then we can talk about it. Right. <laughs> I, I, I just tend to thinking about, right. I get ideas about what could we sponsor. Mm -hmm. But well, then I go, well, wait, I'd rather co-sponsor it with another group because we're little. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? Well, do you have such an idea that you've been hesitating to because you didn't know yeah. how to bring it up <laughs> okay well let's have it so there is a game it's not a competitive game it's called um what is the name see i did i was going to bring it with me yeah and i didn't okay. i can send you information mm -hmm. it's a good game designed to get people to talk about race and diversity uh -huh. and there's no starting point on the game and there's no right answer and it's all the cards and you take turns uh -huh. but uh the organization that created this game is i believe they're called the center for race amity mm -hmm. i can send you the mm -hmm. links mm -hmm. and i went to one of these about six or seven years ago uh -huh. mm -hmm. hosted in the home of a man who is the president of the Amherst group citizens for race Amity. Now mm -hmm. he's since passed away mm -hmm. and I found it really thought provoking and fun. Mm -hmm. um, but I, 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 I love these big events and I, I'm, I also like the idea of how can individuals kind of get to, know each other across difference. That That's an interest of mine because I think all relationships start with like two people. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I could send a link to that site. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a copy of the game. Actually, my sister bought it. My sister lives in East Hampton. Mm -hmm. And it, for us to play it together, like we already know each other's stories. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this gentleman whose home that we played it in He's of African American descent mm -hmm. and had served in the service and just had a whole different different than my background. So that this is what makes that kind of game mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Um and, and would people be interested? It yeah. would it would be enriching if there was a diverse group of people to do it. They recommend that you first watch a 15 minute video mm -hmm. and then you agree to meet like I think it's three three or four times and and play it for an hour or two and just chip away and it, it also helps develop trust and transparency and so it, it you know i thought i wonder where i would love to play this game with some people and i don't know where to where to even begin to go to think of something like that okay. so i could bring it yeah um but i could send you to the yeah yeah, thing. send the link to Pat to put in the minutes and maybe bring it next month to 
Okay. Sort of show, show and tell kind of. And then we can think of, do you want to plan like an event with people beyond this? I wonder, if, you know, I bet you'd get interest from the Hadley Learns list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I wonder. And it's not the kind of thing where you'd have like 80 people. Right. right? If you're talking about building trust and being it's vulnerable. It's more of like a small group. You're, yeah. Yeah. You're talking. Series. I mean, yeah. when I went, I think we had in the room maybe eight people. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. But I only got to go once, and then he passed away, and then oh. COVID hit, and yeah. you know. But in any case, that, yeah. that, <laughs> was it facilitated? Join? Was there a leader? So it, you you share. That's another thing you do. Is you sh who's going to be in that role each meeting? You, there's not a person. But I mean, like I said, if I just show you the link to the website, any of you can just go take a look and see. Mm -hmm. That's just interesting. Yeah. yeah. No, that sounds I'm good. in a space right now where I'm not getting enough community support. Yeah. Any, I just go to work and go home. It's just my life mm -hmm. is kind of zero. <laughs> so it's like I would go out and do that. Maybe we could try every yeah. month or so to do that on the first Thursday. So, you know, those mm -hmm. who have the time or we could take yeah. another night and have a social mm -hmm. food. And oh, God. Not, yeah. you know, so something where we're just mm -hmm. letting our minds or out and we're not doing policy, so it's not a committee meeting. Just yeah. to, you know, th that would be fun. I like that. Idea. Well, that's neat because that was my other thought: was would we ever want to get together as people get and getting to know each other the way we do after the meeting is done yeah. to deepen our relationships? Yeah, and I, I'd be up for that. Yeah, so. I, I was on that um, <clears throat> circle of care to help the Afghans, and we. Well, you know, there was so much to do after like a year we were had people burning out and we would we're like oh let's have a dinner and not we won't you yeah know, we won't go to or be dealing with it but let's just hold ourselves you know and that yeah. was kind of an interesting you know, yeah we didn't follow through enough but mm -hmm. yeah it's the right. same idea mm -hmm. anyway so that's what prompted my question. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Any other open um, agenda? I think the only other question was, and I guess I won't need to do this till another month, but I see her writing minutes. Well, would I be having to do minutes to post? This, so Sarah's doing I'm going to do Sarah's that. Sarah's to take that part. The part. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and they're going to they're gonna look like that. <laughs> Sort of. And then, Pat, were you not attending at all, or were you maybe on Zoom if you could? I or? will come on Zoom if I can, if can, even though the February meeting I do have company because that's school break, I think. Yeah. And so okay. I'm going to have visitors mm -hmm. there, so I don't think I'm going to be able to. Okay. That. And if I had a question for you, you can I can email you or call you. Yeah. yeah call because, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this and this month I'll I'll copy you on everything. Yeah. Okay. That's perfect. Perfect. I want to know how Megan has been and what she's been doing. Yeah. <laughs> but and yeah. that, that can be after the meeting if yeah. you want. <laughs> oh, whatever. I will. Um, I, I had something I was going to share. I will share that as a, a end of open agenda and opening closing reflections because it it mm -hmm. does uh, it does leave me feeling more positive i have and this may just be me uh, i've been serving on the planning board for the last five years i've been on this on this yeah yeah i'm, I'm up for re-election this year huh? and the and on this for three years and when we zoom um we sit here with a blank screen and i i have a feeling that like we're we're in this black void uh, you know here we are five people out of 5500 citizens mm -hmm. and i feel like you know what are we doing well just today i had two i bumped into two people said you know one said are you mark dunn and then the other one knew me and they both referenced um online meetings that I've never seen them at. So huh. it made me realize 
yeah. that people yeah. are watching the recordings. Yeah. Because uh, you know, the one person said, Oh yeah, I don't I don't watch them live. I'm yeah. I'm in bed by whatever time. But yeah. we are mm-hmm. mm. we are, you know, there are people <laughs> watch this and that's that's encouraging because yeah. sometimes you mm-hmm. feel like you know, it's not like we're not doing anything. You just don't know if you're going to help. You know, I don't know. There's a feeling like more people would like to know. Well, mm-hmm. more people do know. I, yeah. I have no idea how many, but that was that, that was encouraging. Mm-hmm. So that was my yeah. Yeah. You don't yeah. know at all. I imagine that on the website there is a way to get stacks, stats for for numbers of. Oh yeah, Alex. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Right. I knew he Alex would know that. how to do that. Wow. Wow. Alex. <laughs> what a Thank you for joining our meeting, Alex. Yeah. I mean, I I have a similar reflection. If we have time for we yeah. do another one, mm-hmm. yeah. do another one. Which is, I am just um, feeling very grateful for this group and our continued commitment, mm-hmm. and and the partners that are coming forward. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's what we suggested, I think, in the summer, that that's what we wanted to do, mm-hmm. is to partner with, yeah. with different yeah. groups in town. Yeah. And, and build, build synergies. We do, them. yes. And I yeah. feel really good about that. And, you know, yeah. Troy, and when you take a look at what he provided to us, that's some rich stuff mm-hmm. yeah. on um, municipal DEI. Mm-hmm. And so if we can, and to your idea too, yeah. Joanne, if we yeah. can get other people mm-hmm. yeah. um, to join with us, I think, that you know would make an even bigger impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I look forward to these meetings big time. Mm-hmm. Me too. <laughs> yeah. So. so Alex, are there hits on because one person mentioned that she watches it on YouTube. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And YouTube then I guess you could success. also just go to your website and and watch it. But I don't know if that's the same as YouTube. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. Can you guys can hear me? Yeah. 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 Great. Um, so one, what oh, I lost my page here. No, I didn't. Okay. So we'll be meeting in October. I think there is a November meeting. I forgot to put in this playlist. Uh, but it looks like you guys are averaging about 30 views. Um, <laughs> Thirty. That's great. Wow. Thirty. Yep. On diversity. Yeah. <laughs> I've got shocked. Yeah. <laughs> See. Um. Do you guys have a November meeting, right? We did. Yeah, we, we did. did. did I'm gonna have to brush my hair next time. <laughs> okay. I guess I don't don't know what happened to the November meeting, but um, uh, I'll look into that for you guys, but. Um, December, October yeah. at 33. Um, and as I look it up here, it seems like they're they've been going up since October of last year. Um, uh, it looks like you had a dip. Um, when Drew and John left, uh, but it's been steadily going up. And um, I can't say how many of you guys are gonna get. Um. Coming up uh, yeah. this month, but they're st- they're st- yeah. you're, you're steadily growing a little bit. Yeah. yeah, Alex, are you talking about people who are actually joining the Zoom meeting? No, not the Zoom meeting, but the YouTube views. Uh, oh, views. Okay. The views on YouTube, and I can't. Um, right. And unfortunately, right. Charter does not provide numbers for us on um, channel 192, uh, but you, yeah. people do watch it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You. See, that's cool. good to know. So the channel 192 is that actually real time? That's live. No. Um, we only live stream. Um, <clears throat> at the moment, Love. at least, select board, planning board, and school committee. Uh, we were doing more live streams, but we had uh, I'll change some meetings, but we have just done recordings as we do other meeting other. Events such as uh, basketball, which is on one and which is on channel one one right now. Um, okay. Hopkins girls play against East Hampton, um, but um, 
we do we, we still live stream meetings not like i said the only meetings that are live stream is select board playing board and school committee everything everything else is recorded okay yeah that's that's great. Great. that makes sense that's still that's uh good to know huh yeah <laughs> and, and, and so and, you and so you said that the viewership dropped when Megan stopped coming and then it's back up again? A <laughs> little bit, it. it seemed like. Um, <laughs> yeah. In September 2020, you had 44. Mm -hmm. September 2022, you had 36. October 2022 was when I start. No, I started you guys back up in September 2022. You got 36. Then it dropped to 9. Then up to 30. 15, 22, 20, 29, 20, and now we're going up 30 back in September of this year, and then 33 in October of the, of last year, I mean. Cool. Wow. And that's not just Pat playing it on a loop mm. at, at home. <laughs> you can both start and do that, Mark, if you'd like. That's like putting your Fitbit on the ceiling fan, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These things take, take do take time, but yeah. uh, uh, when when a committee is committed to mm. continuing their work, yeah. mm -hmm, yeah. it would it would kind of make sense. It, that, yeah, it's, it's and, it's a, and, it, and it's a it's a topic of interest, right? Mm -hmm. I kind of have that feeling like you're you're going up the mountain and you look behind you and there's all these candles being held mm. following you. <laughs> think to look behind. Yeah. Although the cynical side of me is like all oh, the politics and drama around DEI yeah. and how it's being targeted yeah. in many parts of the country. But yeah. hopefully at that hopefully not cynical parts will right, right, right. And yep. it's viewership yeah. by supporters. Yeah. Yeah, but, and these yeah. servers can go up if you guys, you know, make noise in the community and you know talk it up a little oh, more. Yeah. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. we gain a lot from um, numbers, um, the views, and the batch hours because um, that could mean funding for us at some point. Um, oh, it, it can mean anything. Numbers are good for us. Um, obviously, it's going to help you get your message out. Um, there's only so much I can suggest because um, having media and Community media in general are take an unbiased um, stance when we do our stuff. Um, but mm -hmm. if you're out in the community and you make noise, you make noise about these meetings, and you can get your message out. And I mean, these meetings are unedited; they are gavel to gavel, so you get yeah. everything out of it. Okay. Oh, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Pat, teacher, yeah. Our, our media person. Yeah, <laughs> things we didn't know. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, Alex. You're more yeah. than welcome. Yeah, and uh, with that, I'll go on to item eight, which is confirmed dates for upcoming meetings, which I did just triple confirm. They're all on Thursday. They are. Yeah. Yeah. It's Thursday. Yeah. And so, next meeting is the day after Valentine's Day. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, if I'm not here, it's because I'm in some kind of a chocolate coma. <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring cookies, candy, Valentine's Day. Okay. to everybody. <laughs> um, and I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And, and a second? Second. second. All in favor? Okay. okay.